Cool. Right, so ready to go. Oh, good. So the fat loss basics. Um, the first bit we're going to do is like about 20 minutes. So we're going to go through some slides on macros, calories, structure, things like that. If you have any like questions as we're going along, um, call them out and then we'll try and get those answered for you. So do you want to go on to the next slide, Connor? Yeah, I'm forgetting I have to control this. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. So what's a calorie? It's a unit of energy. Um, so on the back of food packets, when you go into a shop, you might see like calories or KCALs. Majority of the time, are the same. Sometimes a little bit different. So you need to be aware of that. The difference of it, it depends what the, there's a, there's a small calorie and there's a large calorie, but I wouldn't worry about that too much, but just be in mind what, when you're picking up anything on the shelf, it could be a K, calories and uh, KCALs are slightly different maybe. Um, and one, one thing I noticed actually as well is like sometimes when you're like pick up things off the shelf and you look like it says like 200 calories or something if you actually like calculate the calories which you can do by like um, figuring out like the macros and then like you know a, a gram of carbohydrates got four calories per gram so like you can figure it out yourself and sometimes they don't actually match up as well so that's something to watch out for as well All yeah, right. de definitely and then when you uh, pick up like some when you pick, pick up uh, something in the store and it says like 100 grams or a serving size just be aware of that because i know a load of my clients pick it up and says oh it's like 300 calories for uh, whatever it was like that's the uh, that's the serving size go off like the 100 grams or whatever so there's always two different numbers on the back of um, food packet we had a big thing the other day actually um when one of my clients sam he was like he was asking me about like cooked weights and raw weights so like he cooked 180 grams of rice but then tracked so it was 180 grams raw sorry that he cooked but tracked it as cooked weight if that makes sense so he had this massive like serving of rice and thought it was like half the calories <laughs> oh wow so you've, well, yeah, this is... you've to be aware of like whether it's the raw weight or whether it's a cooked weight something like rice is obviously going to hold on to water and rice and pasta and things like that um, and obviously cooking just changes the weights anyway so usually for me like as a rule of thumb i just weigh everything raw and go by raw weights Definitely. They're like rice, it triples, doesn't it? So you could be on, say, 90 grams of rice. That's still a lot. Um, so you've got times that by three, so you're getting about 270 grams, like, cooked. So that's a lot of volume of rice. Definitely. So I, that's why I always go off, like, the raw weight. Or when you, like, if you want something a bit more convenient, you go into a shop and you get, like, the packet rice. Obviously, that's the uh, that's the cooked rice, so you, that's the only thing you can go off. But just be aware of uh, the raw weights and the cut weights and just things like that. And then how we get a calorie or how we measure it. So all foods like put in some like chamber, it's burnt. And then the, the energy released is measured. And that's how we actually um, calculate how many calories in certain foods, which is quite interesting. Um, not that you need to really know that, but it's just interesting. Um, so a calorie is defined by a unit of energy. Um, it takes to um, rise water by one degree. So that's, again, that's how um, it's calculated from when we're burning anything like that. Cool. I almost put two there. Um, I need to go back. <laughs> how do I go back on this? Back that way. There we go. Uh, wicked. Uh, so the simple stuff. So protein, carbs, fats. So the macros. Uh, protein and carbs are uh, four calories per gram and then fats a little bit more. So it's a bit more denser in calories. Um, even though protein and carbohydrates are the same calories, they are a lot different. So these proteins are a little bit more thermogenic. It's a bit more satiating, meaning it's going to fill you up a little bit longer. Um, and technically, you could eat a little bit more protein and not put on as much fat, but we'll get into that on the next slide. Yeah. Um, what he means by thermogenic as well is like, um, you know, protein will burn more calories in digestion than, you know, carbohydrates will. Cool. Oh, and then right. yeah. and then obviously we can go into carbohydrates like the the fiber so obviously if you're eating foods with a bit more higher in fiber that's a bit more filling or satiating or whatever you want to call it so um look out for that and make sure having plenty of fiber in diet it's just good for your digestion as well to get things uh mm. moving a little bit more and then obviously with the fats i'd be careful with like foods and fats because they tend to be very very like low uh density in the well very low volume for what you're getting so um if you want to if you're really looking to lose fat and you want to feel a bit more fuller i try and have a relatively low-ish fat intake but still trying to get some good fats in there so around about like 20 30 grams depending 
roughly. May I ask a question on fats? You know, like you buy some and it'll go um, like low fat, but then I watched a programme and they said it was more sugar in it. So you're supposed to like say like you get mayonnaise. It's not a very good example, but would you go for less full fat mayonnaise or more lower fat mayonnaise? Does that make sense? It made sense in my head. Yeah, I mean that that lower fat mayonnaise, it's definitely gonna have like less calories in it just because even though it might have a little bit more sugar, isn't in it, the calories would be a bit lower just because the macronutrients with fats being slightly more calories. Ah, and then yeah. sugar's like the carb. So it's only like four calories. So I definitely if any of my clients looking to lose fat, I'd definitely say um go for the the uh, low fat option. Thank you, Ta. Ta. Cool. Yeah. Ready to move on from that one, James? Yeah, let's go. I did have something on my mind there, and it's, I, I've totally lost it again. Once Ines asked that question, I totally forgot it. But anyway, Sorry. if it comes back, I'll mention <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, so this is a pretty cool study. I don't want to bore anyone with it. But um, all it does is show that, so when uh, the, a control group of people, so they consume 1.4 to 2.0 grams of protein per day per kilogram of body weight, compared to the group in the study, which uh, consumed 4.4. And so the group that consumed 4.4 grams more protein, um, obviously there was more calories, the other macros are the same. So they consume pretty much nearly a third more calories than the, the, the other group but they didn't gain uh more fat compared to the other group so both groups kept the fat uh body fat percentage exactly the same so all that shows is by over consuming eating protein you can't really get fat so that's a pretty cool thing to consider <laughs> I'll take that literally. <laughs> so just <laughs> just eat protein, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. So, um, so factors affecting energy balance is quite a few different ones. These are the ones that I've come up with that I think are the most important. Um, so neat, non um, exercise activity thermogenesis. This is basically the stuff that you're doing outside of exercise or so getting your steps in, moving around the house, doing some uh, work, some chores, just things like that. anything where you're moving that's going to burn calories that we don't really track too much, um, depending if you track your steps or not. Or even like, say, if you like cycling to work or anything like that, any movement or anything like that um and then we've got the intake so if you're in a deficit or a surplus of calories um how much you're eating that dictates on if we're going to gain body weight body fat or reduce it and then stress is a huge role as well this can play if, if we're stressed our body's going to try and like hold on to things um it's going to cause a lot of inflammation and something that we really want to reduce if we're going to try and uh, lose a lot of fat same, same with sleep with so Sorry, James. The thing with no, stress no, as well, like and and linked to digestion. So, like, if you're someone that spends a lot of time in like uh, a stressed out state, your digestion won't be as efficient. Because, like, I mean, the good example is like if you're like running from an animal that's trying to call you to death, your body's going to shut down digestion because it's not something that really matters in that kind of situation. So, like, being kind of highly stressed a lot of the time is going to like it's kind of the same thing and um, even if it's just like work stress not an actual animal chasing you to call you down but um it obviously if digestion's kind of shut down sometimes you might actually end up losing weight because food might just pass through you and you might actually not absorb the nutrients which again like it, it sounds like a good thing losing weight but like health wise that is definitely not not a place you want to be mm, definitely mm. I mean, stress as well. So you've got um, like the psychological factors. You've also got like the physical factors. So you can say like overtraining. If you're doing too much, you need to like regulate your volume, how much you're training. Like sometimes more is not better because it's a lot of stress on your body and it can result in the same sort of thing. So you need to manage that uh, that load of stress. Um, it's burnout really, isn't it? Yeah, phys physically, mentally. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And then it just leads on to sleep. So things like recovery, if we're not recovering well, again, it's going to be hard for us. It's going to be harder for us to lose that body fat. So really focus on getting those like six to eight hours of sleep. It just depends. Everyone's a little bit different. Some, I find some of my clients can function off five hours of sleep and that's totally fine. But again, if you're having like, uh, say eight hours of sleep and it's broken up and down, it just depends. Just make sure you're getting that quality sleeping. 
And then we've got the macro breakdown. So what I touched on previously is having like high amount of the protein intake. It can sort of be a little bit more filling and it's also going to lead to um, a better body composition, meaning we're more likely to have more lean mass and less body fat. So what I'd always recommend is um, have a steady amount of carbs, lowish fat, and then the high protein diet if we're looking to lose some fat. Uh, Resistance training. And that's really important as well, just because that's going to help us maintain uh, lean tissue while we're trying to really get down that uh, that body fat. And it's important that we maintain that lean tissue because it increases our metabolism, basically. So that's going to help us burn fat even more. So it's important that we put resistance training in. Resistance training, even more important than cardio. Uh, and then like medication and pathologies, there's loads of different things. It depends on like... For females, if you're taking a certain contraceptive, this can like promote a lot more fat gain. Um, I don't know if anyone's taking anything like at the moment or anything like, but I know um, a lot of my female clients that was given a certain contraceptive and that made them gain um, more body fat compared to others. So I told them or to speak to a doctor if they could switch it and then you can it definitely drop some weight and body fat off there. Yeah, and some then digest less symptomatic than others, obviously, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then digestion, I think we literally just touched on that. Anyway, what, what, what kind of was speaking about? The kind of sleep, stress and digestion, they all kind of have a knock-on effect onto each other. Yeah. You know, if you if you sleep, shit, your stress levels are going to be higher and then your digestion is going to be knocked from that. Like, not just one night, obviously, but, like, long-term, if these things aren't kind of in place and looked after, it's not creating a good environment for losing body fat. Yeah. Perfect. Or anything else, for that matter of fact. <laughs> right. Have we got... Have we got any questions on that one or? Oh, we'll move back for a second. Anything? No. <laughs> all good. Right. So no. now no. that we know all that, how do we put this all together? So I'm going to run through a couple of different options for like your nutrition, basically how you're going to put it together. Um, and one thing we don't want to do is make drastic changes to our like current eating habits because like things like and I, I'm not naming any names just plus <laughs> but things like this and um, you know th- they're unsustainable because as I say you're making these massive changes to your current habits and they're just not going to last long term it might work for a wee while you might lose 10 pounds in the first week but most people that take these kind of approaches they end up relapsing and if anyone's ever seen the biggest loser you know they go from like mm doing absolutely nothing to like eight hours a day of pure exercise and then all of a sudden they go back to their normal lives and most of them regain it again because they've not got that eight hours of exercise that they were doing for no one can actually do that when they're working and things like that so like unsustainable methods means unsustainable results so we want to get something that's going to work for you long term I mean, like, what of, uh, where I used to work, it was um, a pretty big, like, transformation centre in Manchester. Um, it was sort of like UP Ultimate Performance. So what they did was, like, 12-week transformation. Once all they cared about was achieving that transformation, and then they just left them to it straight after that. And the amount of rebounds I saw, it was crazy. Yeah, definitely. What do you think to that uh, twen- uh, that fasting diet? I hate the word diet, but, you um, know, faster where you do, like... Um... Do you know which one I mean? Where you do like 500 calories one day and then you can oh, eat normal the, the, another day. The 5 2 diet. That's it. That's yeah. it. Um, I'm not the biggest fan. I'm, I, no. I, like fa- I like fasting. I do like fasting. That can work with some people. Um, but a 5 2 diet, just because of how low your calories do you drop on certain days, um, I would definitely recommend it to any of my clients. I can't say I've even looked into that before. It's, I think it's, uh, that, that's, the, that's a crash diet. Yeah, it sounds like one. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually, I was talking to Victoria this morning about, um, you know, intermittent fasting, you know, like just basically creating a small window in the day to eat. And like like you say, that can work for some people, but for some people it's not going to work very well. Well, it's just yeah, kind of think what it, works for you, I suppose. Exactly. I know, yeah, you just need to have a trial and just play around with some things and see what does work for you. And it, it's it's easy not. to say you need a calorie deficit, but it's like, how do we create that calorie deficit and what's the best mm-hmm. way for you? So the ones I'm going to go over is like a meal plan. So obviously I've got my pros and cons of this up here. So like meal plans are something I quite like personally, but like I wouldn't use them for every single client. So the pros of this is obviously like you're, you've got this kind of consistent routine you know what you're eating you know when you're eating it and you're just kind of almost almost like a robot just same thing same time every single day and whenever I've done like a bodybuilding prep that's the way I've done it but I know for a lot of people there obviously are the cons of that like for example it can become pretty boring and I should probably 
finish the pros first. <laughs> so like moving on from like consistency in the routine, the like, it's time efficient because you like you will find you prep your foods in advance. And um, again, even if you're like working from home, even having the food there sitting ready to go, like it, it saves you so much time in your lunch hour. You can get out and you know go a walk or do something like that um, and not spend a whole hour cooking. Um, and then the the final pro I've got on there is it's incredibly accurate because if you're eating the same amounts of the same foods every single day, when you come to adjust it, you know you're adjusting the same thing. You're comparing apples to apples, if that makes sense. Um, and when we move on to the next one, we'll see where things might not be so accurate. Um, you have anything to add to that, James, before I go on to the cons? No, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. There's more structure, but it just depends on how you can stick to that routine. And it's the flexibility sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, it, it can become boring. Like, if you're eating the same food day in, day out, it can become pretty boring. Um, and, you know, by the end of it, you just want something different more than anything. Um, that's the thing, like, it's it's not really sustainable if it's something that you're saying, by the end of it, I just want more food. Um, so, yeah, that's not really a totally sustainable thing. Like, a meal plan is maybe something you would use for a period of time. But long term, you need to know how you can adjust that, which is something I'm going to move on to anyway. Um, it can put you off socialising being in a meal plan. So again, um, like my family and friends that are in here will know that I've been out and I've like, you know, took Tupperware out to, to family meals and things like that to stay on meal plan. Um, and that, you know, that itself can put you off actually going out and speaking to people and socialising. Um, and then the lack of variety stroke micronutrients. So like, for most of you guys that are in here it's it's more about health like that was for bodybuilding i've done that that's kind of you know different when you're doing it for a sport but in terms of like general health and fat loss we want to be getting a variety of different nutrients we don't want to be eating the same things every single day and um, you know micronutrients and um, have got loads of different roles in the body and you know they're going to contribute to so much so we need to make sure we're getting them in as well so moving on from that oh moving on too much that was a wee surprise round there, eh? Um, so mo moving on to macro tracking. Um, so this is like tracking your calories or um, tracking your macros using my fitness pal or something like that, you know, using an app. Or if you're really old school, you can use a, a pen and paper. Um, so the pros of this is it's pretty flexible. Um, you don't have to eat the same things every day. You can adjust it to fit in almost whatever you like within your calorie allowance. Then we could go on to the socializing aspect. So it means like, you know, I've, I've been doing a macro tracking diet for the last few weeks and like I've ate out every single week on it. So you can fit these things in um, and it means you don't have to be afraid of that kind of going out and, and socializing with friends. Um, and then awareness is the last one I've put on there because it, it creates awareness. When you start tracking foods, you're like, oh shit, um, my light mayonnaise is full of sugars, <laughs> for example. Um, so like, you know, you begin to understand or begin to learn what's in certain foods. And the more you kind of learn these kind of things, um, the more you're going to know it for the future. So the longer you've been tracking, the more uh, kind of education on like nutrition you end up having or what's on in things, essentially. Just trying to put a light on here. It's also dark. Oh, that's better. <laughs> So the cons of this is some people can get very obsessive with this, like to the fact that they'll not, you know, go a day of their life without tracking ever again. Um, and they can get very carried away with like trying to track, you know, every single gram of thing that they eat. So it, it does have that, like people that have got that kind of nature anyway, it can really promote that in them. Uh, so it might not be such a good idea for them. It's less time efficient. I've put this because you find yourself like thinking, all right, I've got 600 calories. What can I eat for that? And then you spend your, I spend a lot of time actually like creating this food that you probably wouldn't otherwise be interested in, but it's just because you've got that amount of calories left. You're like, right, what's the, the most amount of food I can eat for this? And um, so it can get to that stage for some people. And um, it can be inaccurate. Um, and I kind of touched on that earlier when James was going through his slides and, um, you know, like food labels aren't always completely right. So, it can be, you, you could be tracking something. For example, go, going back to the cooked weights versus raw weights as well, actually. One of my clients for a long time was um, tracking 100 grams of pasta as 100, like 100 grams raw as like 170 calories, when actually it's double that. So that could be enough to actually put you out your calorie deficit. And then you're wondering, you know, you're stepping on the scales, you're wondering why nothing's happening. You're com completely sticking to the plan could be something like that so we've got to watch out for things like that too um, and i've put at the bottom uh, food quality because some people can take the piss with this and they will just eat a lot of junk basically um, and say oh it's within my calories but again like i say for you guys it's going to be about health as well as fat loss so it's like 
we want to get those nutrients in there. We want to be eating a good amount of fiber. We want to be getting our micronutrients in, and you know our vitamins, things like that. So yeah, that that can definitely be a kind of a, a way of people kind of cheating this, if that makes sense, and kind of just eating junk all the time. One of my uh, one of my clients used to have a chocolate cake a day, like a, you know one of those Morrison's ones that's in a box. It had about like six hundred calories in it, and she was on. 1,800 a day and literally a third of the calories that she was on it's ridiculous and had that in the evenings <laughs> that's a good way to get touching it though like a third of her calories were coming from things that aren't really nutrient dense and so like maybe the way to look at this is like i always go on about the 80 20 split so 80 percent of your foods coming from nutrient dense kind of foods and then 20 percent of your foods come from things that might not be so optimal but you enjoy them anyway and you want to have them and um, yeah. so that's probably a good way to split it you could do that again across the day or across the week oh here we go they've removed the 40 minute time limit in our group meeting brilliant okay. <laughs> we must have been good approaching that <laughs> right we'll move on to the next slide so I was just saying that I didn't have my client eating a chocolate cake every evening like that. <laughs> it was their, their choice until I found out when he was sending the pictures over the food. <laughs> just to clarify. <laughs> um, so I put here hybrid. Why not use both? This is something that I use quite a lot, a kind of hybrid method between a meal plan and actually like tracking calories. So um, you can see this guy's really happy with it. He's got his nice physique factory top on and everything, perfect color. Um, so he's really happy with his hybrid plan that I've made. So we're going to go on to his plan. So this is an example of a plan that I use with some of my clients or not the exact plan, but you know, a type of plan that I use. Um, and basically this is like meal one, two, three. And he's got a choice of three different meals here for each one. So a blue, a yellow, or a green. And then also at the side, I put the calories and the macros. So this means that if he does go off plan, if he doesn't have any of these things that are on the plan, he knows how many calories he's got for that meal and he knows what his protein goal is. That These two things are the things that matter. It doesn't really matter so much about the mixture of these two um, within reason. Don't go too far one way, obviously, but like it doesn't matter too much about these two as long as we're hitting the calories and the protein. So you could create yourself a meal plan. You could figure out the calories for each meal and then if you happen to go off track from that meal plan, uh, plan, you've got something to fall back on. And I often say to clients, when you've got this approach, there's like there's no real going off plan because you can always make it work in some way, shape or form. Um, and then what we're going to move on to next promotes that even more. So now we're going to look at average calories. So average calories are probably going to be more important than your daily intake. Now, this is good for situations where, for example, in this one, I've kind of put this guy's kind of, or, or girl, <laughs> whoever you want it to be, and they've ate 1,700 calories, which is their target for the first two days. On the Wednesday, something's went wrong, and they've ended up eating well over the calories. But for the rest of the week, this person's known that averages are more important than the daily intake, so they've under ate for the rest of the week. And looking at the total weekly calories here and the average calories, it's worked out at 1700 so that 1700 was obviously this person's calorie deficit and um, and he's managed to bring that back around to average 1700 for the week this kind of thing will have the same results as like you know hitting that 1700 calories well each day the only thing you would have to look out for in this type of approach is fluctuations in weight so like if you had ate you know two and a half thousand calories on wednesday your weight's probably going to be higher on the first day morning. And then by the time you've had these four calorie days, you know, four days in a row, then it might be a little bit lower. So your weight might fluctuate a little bit because of that. Um, but yeah, as long as we know that across the week or even two weeks um, that we're kind of averaging out, then things should pretty much go to plan from there. Has anyone got any questions on this? I've realized I haven't asked you guys if you have any questions for the last few while. All good? Yeah, I think, the, uh, I think the weight fluctuation thing is really good. I think that, like the uh, majority of the people watching, like the females as well. So certain times of the month, obviously you're going to be quite like heavier. Um, so that week leading up to being on the cycle, um, one of my clients can gain up to like three to four kilograms. So it could be quite a lot. So that's a good thing to keep in mind when you're weighing and tracking when um, your weight fluctuates up and down like that. And I think um, with that as well, it's like until you've got like a month of data for a woman at well even two months sometimes to see the kind of trends it's hard to know what it's going to do you throw something like birth control into the mix and that totally throws that like off off kind of skew so like we could be getting fluctuations here there and everywhere so it's like you might you know completely stick to the plan and then your weight goes up and that, that's totally disheartening but 
you've just got to have that awareness of this is what it could be. This could be something that's impacting it. Not so much using it as an excuse because some clients may kind of take it that way, but um, you know, having awareness of that, it can affect your scale weight too. The, the other thing while we're on this as well worth mentioning is um, like when you eat carbohydrates, they store three grams of water per gram of carbohydrate. So for example, like say you had 500 grams of carbohydrates today, that would store, you know, um, 1500 grams of water as well, which would be a two kilo increase on the scales the next day. So carbohydrate consumption okay. is really going to promote water, can, um, water, what you call it, absorption. So um, that's obviously going to put your scale weight up as well. So that's definitely worth considering too. We'll move on to this one as another average calories one. And this is more kind of mm -hmm. planned out one. This is what I would promote people to use more often than not and um, if you had a big meal like on a saturday night if you're out with family or something like that so this person's had three thousand calories on the saturday night they knew something was coming up so the other six days of the week they plan to eat 1484 and that's working out our weekly calories to the same and it's working out our average calories to the same so this is another way you can kind of look at this like um often when like clients you know like like a drink or like going out for a meal out or a takeaway or something like that this is a way you can work it if you're willing to cut your calories through the week to account for it i mean the best way to think about your calorie balance for the weekend for the day is like it's a bank balance almost and how how best do you spend it so it totally again depends on you and what you want out of this so the downsides of averages um i just kind of threw this one in here for the crack but um if we go to two extremes averages can still kind of look good if that makes sense so like if you got in a swim pool for two hours and the temperature was 25 degrees for those two hours that would probably be quite pleasant but if that same pool was 100 degrees for one hour and then minus 50 for the next hour that probably wouldn't be that enjoyable so it shows how like we could be at two extremes and the averages could still be the same i highly doubt many of you guys are going to do that but you know, you do get the odd person that does take the piss with these things. <laughs> so, yeah, um, it's definitely something to consider. Um, and finally, on average calories, this is a book I would definitely recommend you guys reading because it's it's quite a simple one to grasp um, and he puts it together really well. And um, he, he goes on about, obviously, average calories, but, you know, things like, you know, these kind of um, fad diets and things like that, you know, like, like that one you were on about earlier, Vanessa, things like that. He goes on about how to, like, kind of identify them. And it's kind of really short char uh, chapters and it's really kind of easily, like, it's communicated well. It's easy to understand, even if you don't know a lot about nutrition. So I, I would definitely recommend that to all you guys. So moving on to hunger, and I've got this nice hunger scale here. So when we're trying to lose body fat, we want to kind of stay in this range that I've got circled here. We don't want to end up down at number one where we're starving and ravenous, um, and we don't want to end up at the other end where we're like sickly full and like we're overeating. We want to stay somewhere in the middle. Now, I've got a good, good wee story I often tell clients about this one. Um, so one day we're just out getting food shopping, uh, me and Sophie, and we're in... Aldi or Lidl or something and I picked up one of the like we Skyr yogurt pouches I was I was quite hungry at this stage and I had that and literally you know it's like 120 calories or something and when we started to head home Sophie says to me do you want a McDonald's and uh, I managed to say no I managed to like contain myself but had I not had that I probably would have fell into this kind of one two three here and then then when we're in that kind of stage we're kind of irrational in our decisions. We would do things that don't really align with what we want to achieve. So because I would have let myself get so hungry, I would have been like, yeah. And then I would have regretted that later on. I would have ended up somewhere down eight, nine, 10, and I would have regretted that. But um, it's just something to consider, I suppose, when when you're out and about and um, when you're making decisions, you, if you let yourself get into this kind of one, two, three here, you're probably going to be pretty irrational if you're hungry. Just end up stuffing your face. Mm. So this is one for all you guys to try, unless um, unless me or James have actually got you some plans already. But you can take like a picture of this, a screenshot of this or whatever. But um, if you want to try and lose some body fat in the next four weeks, here's what you can try. So to work out your calories, do 12 times your body weight in pounds. Protein, roughly somewhere between 1.7 to 2.2 times your body weight in kilos. So that's a bit confusing, pounds and kilos, but just take a picture of it so that you know it's there. Um, then to track your weight on a daily basis, first thing in the morning, um, fasted, so that means just like before eating, um, and make sure you're keeping those weigh-ins very consistent because if you're like weighing in after you know going to the toilet one day and then 
the next morning you weigh in and you've you've not been to the toilet, that's going to be different. Or if you'd ate your breakfast and one day you hadn't ate, ate your breakfast, it's going to be different. So I would always just do it first thing in the morning, either go to the toilet or don't, whatever kind of suits you, and just keep it exactly the same every single morning, same pose, same scales, the scales in the same position, and that's going to give us the most accurate kind of tracking from there. Like the calories, you can take an average of your weight as well because your weight will fluctuate from time to time, especially women, obviously, as we said. Um, and if you take an average of your weight, sometimes that's a better way to look at it than like kind of looking at once per week because you could look at it that one day per week that you did have a fluctuation and think that you hadn't lost weight and that could be enough to throw you off track. Yeah, I've what lost- I do with that, what I do with that sometimes when um, you could, it depends how obsessive it's going to get if you're you need to be mindful about it and it doesn't get too um, over the top, but track in daily and then see what you can do with that and then you can see the fluctuations in weight. Yeah, definitely. Um, And also I put like track your measurements once per week. That's another way to look at your progress. So I've, I've definitely seen clients who haven't lost any scale weight but they've lost measurements for the week. So had we not tracked the measurements, they probably would have thought that week had been a disaster. But when you actually look at it and you're wasted down, you're like, shit, yeah, I've actually, actually made progress for this week. Um, and and for some people, depending on your starting point, um, you might not actually lose that much scale weight, but your measurements might completely change. I, I don't know about you, James, but I've definitely had clients that, you know, and within a maybe 12, 16 week period, look completely different, but they don't weigh much different at all. Yeah, yeah, that's a body composition thing, isn't it? When you've got that's like it, yeah, more yeah. mass and less fat. So yeah, that's what happens when you obviously gain muscle and lose body mm-hmm. fat as well. That's that's obviously another thing that can affect your weight. Like if you lose two pounds of fat, but you gain two pounds of muscle, you're going to be the same weight. So mm-hmm. again, even taking pictures is another way of looking at your progress so that you mm-hmm. can kind of see if you're visually happy. Because although some people like to aim for a scale weight, um, if you're happy with what you're seeing in the mirror, then your scale weight's pretty ir- irrelevant. <laughs> Um, and uh, you have something to say there, James? No, that's good. Ah, I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> um, so I put at the bottom here, obviously, commit for four weeks, give it four weeks, give it time to work, and then see where you're at from there. And you can message me or James if you're stuck on anything at all, and we'd be happy to help. And hopefully that'll help some of you guys along the way, get you kind of started in your, um, your kind of journey. Can you just go over that protein bit again? Yeah, so... Can- your protein yeah, would be 1.7 to 2.2 times body weight in kilos. But with that, what you, yeah, oh. what you, yeah, what you do is yeah. say, so body weight in kilos, um, let's, for example, get the calculator out. So 80 kilograms, uh, let's go in the middle, let's go 1.9. So that'd be grams of protein times by the body weight, 80, and that'd give us like 152. Um, so that'd be 152 grams of protein a day roughly, depending on what your body weight is. Something I should have said, actually, if I can go back here, um, when we're doing the average calories thing, you would want to make sure that your protein is still the same every single day. So if your protein target is 152, you still want to make sure your protein's the same every day. We don't want to take that on an average. Um, And ideally, I mean, ideally we'd be eating a serving of protein every kind of two to three hours, so somewhere between 20 to uh, 30 grams. Um, But What's most important is getting your daily amount of protein in, but then second best would be spacing that nicely throughout the day. Um, does that make sense to everyone, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Makes Do sense. you just weigh it then? Do you just like, so you say yeah. you're allowed 152, you just weigh it? It depends oh, um, what like the foods and the proteins and say chicken, that's about like 200 grams of chicken, that's roughly around about 50 grams of protein. So you just have it like measure the calories and measure the grams of the chicken and then see how many much proteins in that so if i set someone a plan with 100 they would go 100 grams rather than 200 uh, that'd be like 25 and then you'd say have four meals of like chicken i wouldn't say you have four meals of chicken to anyone but just an example that give us about 100 grams of protein per day the, the way All I can right. do it, Vanessa, um, is like I'll cook a kilo of chicken at a time. So I'll weigh out like one kilo of chicken and then I'll cook that in one go, put it all in the tub and then um, divide the cooked weight by 10. And then you know what 100 grams is. So you can pay, basically work out anything from there. Um, but yeah. Vanessa's kind of on a plan right now where we've got her just tracking hand portions and things like that. But don't worry, Vanessa, I've got plans to uh, turn <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> We kept it yeah, simple but... to begin with, don't worry. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get onto this. <laughs> yeah. um, at least you know what's coming now. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> 
So we thought we'd take this opportunity as well just to introduce the next 12-week challenge. So people who are familiar with me will know that I kind of run the 12-week challenge um, a, a few times a year. This is something we're going to run through um, Physique Factory. So we're going to look to start that in March 2022. So if anyone was interested in getting started in this, just either message me or James, um, or even just put a Y into the chat and we can uh, we can pop you over some details on that. But it's definitely something we're looking to start um, come March this year which is only a month away because February is starting soon. So that's absolutely everything. Has anyone got any questions on anything at all? Doesn't even need to be related to this. We can answer any questions. No, I don't think so. All good? Yeah. Cool. Well, Perfect. thank you all for coming, guys. Appreciate everyone that made the effort to, to come down and watch us today. No, thank you for your time. That's good. Yeah. Well, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks. Yeah, same to you. Have a good weekend. Yes. Thank you, Connor. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.